I'm Technical Sergeant Robert Vitale. I play clarinet with the United States Air Force Academy Band. And today, I'd like to talk to you about an evil little thing that tends to work itself into the playing of clarinetists. That's called undertones. Undertones can have a variety of different names. Some performers and educators refer to them as subtones. They call them shadow tones, grunts. And I've even heard of an educator once explain it to it, uh, their students as the note that comes before the note. So this is something that generally appears in the upper register of the clarinet, as high as our clarion G sharp with register key. And it can go all the way into the altissimo register. One example of this, if you're learning the Weber concertino, that opening B flat lends itself very easily to an undertone. It sounds like this. If you're struggling with undertones in your playing, I have five tips and tricks that you can use today to help eliminate them from your playing. The first trick that I have is to simply place more of the mouthpiece into your mouth. If you play with a very shallow bite where your teeth rest on the very tip of the mouthpiece, it'll pinch the reed and it'll create an undertone. If I use my thumb to place a little bit more of the mouthpiece, as well as the clarinet, into my mouth, you'll hear that the undertone will actually disappear. Another trick that I have for determining if you're using the correct amount of mouthpiece into your mouth is by simply taking a business card or a piece of index paper, index card, and simply place it between the reed and the mouthpiece. And right where it snugs, if you look at it from a side profile, you should see about where your teeth rest on the beak of the mouthpiece should fall in line with the bottom of the uh, business card. Now, this is a relative guide, it's not the rule, but if you see an excessive amount of uh, teeth placement based upon the back of your mouthpiece, either above or below that imaginary line where the card is getting snug, you may have to make an embouchure adjustment. Number two, don't bite the mouthpiece. When we bite the mouthpiece, we end up pinching the reed closed, which is similar to taking a shallow bite, and it'll create an undertone. You want your embouchure to be firm, but not clenched. Number three, use the correct syllable for the correct register on the clarinet. Normally in the lower register, we use the syllable two, but in the upper register of the clarinet, we usually switch to a T sound. It gives us a good attack, but the E and the T will allow the back of our tongue to arc, which speeds up the airstream to produce the correct tone in the upper register without the undertone. Tip number four, know your equipment. Don't play on reeds that have chips and cracks in them. And also occasionally inspect your clarinet mouthpiece. If it ever gets stowed in your case loosely, unprotected, it can roll around and come in contact with other objects of your case. And it can actually put little chips and divots in the table of the mouthpiece, as well as the side rails and even the tip. If your mouthpiece has imperfections in it, it's not going to play correctly. Another bit of advice that I have is knowing the register key on your clarinet. Some clarinets that aren't set up correctly, the register key opens up too much, it vents too much air, and then it can cause undertones in the upper register of the clarinet. So if, you have, if the other tips aren't quite working for you, you can try this. Take a little piece of paper that I folded up and place it behind your register key, like such, here. Oops, I didn't line that perfectly. Place it behind your register key, and you'll notice that by putting that under there, it'll cause it to hit a little bit earlier, so it won't open up as much, and it won't vent as much air. If you play like that, and you notice that your undertones magically disappeared, you might have to have a conversation with your repair technician about closing the opening of your register key. Tip number five, record yourself. You can't repair what you can't hear. So if you have access to a smartphone, a tablet, or a laptop, try to record some of your upper register playing on those devices and listen back. If you hear those undertones playing, you can go back and fix them with these five tips that I just gave you. 
Our brains are very good at programming themselves to not hearing imperfections in our playing. So when you do a playback and you listen to your own playing, you can isolate them specifically. I hope you've enjoyed this educational video today. If you have any questions, please make sure to go onto our Facebook page and ask them, or maybe our website, and I'd be happy to get you a response. Thank you.